Sensor is scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see. The future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. And welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Michael. Hello. We have Stuart. Newton Dog. We have Amy. Morning, all. We have the long-missing Scarecrow. G'day, guys. We have Eugene. Eugene? Hello. There he is. Hello. <laughs> and here I was thinking the model gets a D in it. <laughs> and we have Tom from the Save Sci-Fi Film Festival. Sorry, the God damn it, I screwed that up. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's official. We have officially taken over your film festival. You lose it, it's gone, it's ours now. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Good God. Well, well it's, it's coming to Queensland, so it's okay. It's, it's oh, been really? a very, Sweet. very long day, okay? I picked up Halo at midnight. I slept for like two hours because I couldn't get to sleep. Found it, it's only downloaded 15%. Okay, I'm just a little bit out of it from the Sci-Fi Film Festival based in Sydney. So, today on the podcast, we are talking about the Sci-Fi Film Festival in Sydney, obviously, coming up in, um, what, four or five days? Yes. Yeah. Um, we are also going to be covering the Star Wars trailer. <laughs> yeah, Stuart's going to have some fun with that. And <laughs> Put your least, back on, Jedi boy. What have you got for us this week, Eugene? This week we're going to be covering a Star Trek themed game called Red Shirts. That definitely sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so let's get the ball rolling with the Sci Fi Film Festival. I like Save Sci Fi Film Festival, it has a nice ring to it. Of course you would. Wow. Of course you would. <laughs> this is why we do it live. You, 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 that way you don't miss out on all of me <laughs> constantly screwing up. As the host, <laughs> I'm contractually obliged to screw everything up. You should, Michael should know. He's the one that wrote the contract in crayon. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You haven't been around when, the, when we haven't even been able to do the podcast because the freaking everything internet on his end decided, nope. Yeah, that was two weeks worth of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was right on the right on the first anniversary. Anyway, sorry, we, we've got to get back on topic. Sci-Fi Film Festival based in Sydney. Australia, for those who obviously think we're talking about... challenged. Yeah, for those who think we're talking about Sydney anywhere else in the world, talking Sydney, Australia. Um, so, Tom, can you give us a lowdown on what's what's going to be happening there in the next couple of days? Well, lots of things. We've got a whole lot of um, world premieres, which we'll talk about in a second, and we've got... Um, we've added a, a, a sci-fi convention as well. Um, and actually, I can reveal we're giving out about seven thousand dollars worth of prizes and a thousand dollars in cash for to cosplayers. Nice. Ooh. Too bad it's too far. Yeah. Damn! I would so be in my Jedi gear. Do it. <laughs> I already have plans. There's an airport like two minutes away from. I me. have plans already. Ah. Uh, You're boring. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll be one of the name. You can't drive down. We'll, we'll have to let all, our co- all the cosplayers out there know about it. I've sent some shots and messages. Yeah, I've sent stuff out as well. So yeah. Um, so that sounds like it's going to be an absolute blast. Well, we announced today that we're giving out seven thousand dollars in prizes. Nice. We... Can I have some? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Well, I was just no, about to can't. suggest we should we should sponsor an award for <coughs> um, for next next year. Well, Ooh, that would be a nice idea. It's actually um, through your one of your regulars um, through Gen Eight. Yeah, Scott uh, Garrison Seven. Scott, yes, he's um, giving us a whole lot of prizes. Um, yeah, he's, which, he's really really good. Yeah, yeah, he's giving out one of those sci-fi blasters in Garrison Seven. Nice. Oh, nice. Where's mine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, what about mine, for God's sake? As, as no. much as guns are so uncivilized, I want one. <laughs> hey, we're in, here, yeah, here in the States. Here in the States, the freaking... guns are everyday news, you know? The, the, the other thing we can say is, like, there's going to be a whole lot of Batman, Arkham Knight, latex cowls, and latex gauntlets. Nice. Um, with $100 gift vouchers and um, a Hulk latex gauntlet with a $50 voucher to the runner-up as well. And they're from Phantom Zone, the comic store in um, Parramatta, where we're going to be at holding our sci-fi film festival. Nice. But, look, we've got, we've had, over, look, this year is quite an amazing year because we've had over 300 submissions yeah. uh, to our and this is only our second year as a sci-fi film festival. Um, we're going to be headlining the world premiere of the Australian film Arrowhead, which was originally made um, financed to appear in Australia Sci-Fi Channel before, before it got shut down. Before it got shut down, yes. Yeah. See, Sci-Fi Channel screwing Sci-Fi everywhere it goes. Yes. Yeah, the Australian version of the Australian branch of sci-fi actually stayed science fiction pretty much, right? Yeah, the, the, the Aussie sci-fi channel was really, really good. It stayed true to the old sci-fi message. That's why it got shut down. <laughs> and it was promptly shut down. Yeah, well, they they refused to do all the reality TV show stuff, so sci-fi channel went bye bye. <laughs> well, good on them. Good on them. So, yeah. So, yeah. Like, how is um, reality TV sci-fi really? Well, it depends. Are you surviving on a on a Make believe spaceship floating in space. Like I think, um, what's it called? I might be. <laughs> oh, what was the TV universe. show? That was a while ago. Not universe. Um, done by the the Stargate guys. It was a mini series. Oh, it's about to say Dark Matter. No. Ascension. Oh, Ascension. 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 Yeah, Ascension. It wasn't in space. I know, but I'm just saying that could make a really interesting reality TV show. Drug people up, make them think they're on a spaceship somewhere, <laughs> and see what happens. Wait oh, that was, that was a weird show. That was a weird show. Yeah. Anyway, it, sorry. It has, back, it has back. Some really good uh, twists and everything. Yeah. Anyway, back to Arrowhead. Um, yeah. The tr you put the trailer up the other day. It looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah. What's that about? was really amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, really excited about that. Really excited about this show because the thing the thing about it was it was actually made for a TV series, but they've actually had to then put it as a film. Which yeah, yeah. So, uh, so really, really excited, really excited to be screening that. Yeah, sort of reminds me of EJ, who bailed on us for a lot and ability. So yeah, oh well. Um, he's actually he's got the he's doing his first screening of that this weekend as well, I think. Yep, it's this weekend Which at is why he's running around, like a, running around like a loony. I think it's exactly the same time that Arrowhead's going. Yeah, so, it's going to be... It, hope both of you guys go... Um, everything yeah. goes well for both of you guys. So we're probably going to have EJ on next week to give us a rundown on how it went, and we'll get you on to get a rundown on how the, the, the film festival went, and we'll, we'll tell you what our pick for the movie from the short films... Is because I've been yes. slowly going through them and they actually look really, really good. Mm. Yes, I sent you. Um, <laughs> we, we actually yesterday we um, we know our winning films. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we'll, I'll, uh, we can talk about that next week. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so what other stuff you got there? You've got about a dozen or so short films, sort of ten to fifteen-ish minutes long. Um, uh, we're, we've actually got uh, five sessions of uh, short films. Nice. All of which are run for 90 minutes. Uh, two sessions are very child-friendly. Yep. And uh, the the other ones are just, um, just a collection of films from around the world. Um, you know, from anywhere from Paris to Mexico, or from France to Mexico to Netherlands. Um, uh, actually, my favourite ones are from Netherlands this year. I gotta, I gotta say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what what cinemas are these going to be shown at? Well, we've literally taken the whole venue at Riverside Theatres, three cinemas. Nice. And we start at ten o'clock. And finish at ten o'clock, and of course, being Halloween, it uh, 
you know, we're encouraging cosplayers to come up. We're even screening the Poltergeist, the remake of Poltergeist. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. <laughs> oh, I definitely wish I could be down there. Oh, well. I've got some friends in Sydney I'm sending you away, so... Ah, nice. Yeah. And we've got, like, over 30, 34, 35 stall holders from comic books to collectibles to face painting to, you know just everything that you'll find in a convention. So, yeah, yeah really looking forward to it. Yeah, I would definitely be there if if I could get time off work, which I can't, but, yeah. But it's a good time. It's a good time. Well, the good thing about it is, like, you know, we thought, we thought we'd actually have a really good fun day with the whole being Halloween and just yeah. really get people give people an excuse to come out. And have some fun and watch have some fun. Away. That's oh. right. Some films and actually, you know, um, put on their costume and uh, just enjoy the day. Yeah. Well, we've actually... Do you guys actually celebrate Halloween like we do in the States? Um, no. No. Not, not to the extent that you guys do. It's sort of a bleed through after sort of World War Two. We started doing it in dribs and drobs. The big companies still push it. It's effectively from the middle of end of the financial year to now is they just push Halloween, 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 but no one over here really does it. Even this in, even is in the No dressing up in costumes and like oh, oh, getting candy. Oh no no no! We still have trick or treaters. Don't worry. The, the, okay. The odd group of people do, but it's nothing compared to the states. So I should stay away from Australia for trick or treating. I won't get any good candy there. Yeah, you, you won't get you, anything. You'd be lucky really. candy at all. Yeah. Okay, I'll stick. I'll stick uh, to the states. It depends <laughs> on the area, really. If you got a really high population of uh, older generation plus uh, young kids around. It generally does happen. Like my area does quite a bit of trick or treating, but I have no one. At, <laughs> yes, you live across the road from a new Bunnings, babe. I, was about to I say, live you in an live, industrial area. You live in the middle of an industrial area next to a swamp. You're lucky the thing doesn't turn up and just start wandering around <laughs> past you. <laughs> Mind you, I went and bought chocolate the other day. <laughs> oh mine. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> Not helping, babe. <laughs> so, um, so we've actually been giving away a couple of free tickets on the Facebook page over the last couple of days. So one of the guys, and hilariously, just happens to be one of the guys that I grew up um, just down the road from me. He moved down to Sydney and didn't even know I was running the page until I sent him a message saying that, oh, by the way, you want a ticket. Um, <laughs> was Etten... Um, and he's, he's a really good bloke, so he's, he's won one of the tickets to one of the movies, and um, one of the ladies from Sydney who commented on one of the other trailers won a ticket, so looking forward to hearing right. back for them. We're, we're, we're giving out tickets all week, isn't that right? Um, yeah, every time that these guys post a trailer for a movie, I sh I'll share it on um, Save Sci-Fi, and first commenter from Sydney who wants to go see it gets a free ticket. So so I guess I'm not, I, I can't have my travel paid for. You no. wish. <laughs> I do Was wish it... you have no idea. <laughs> we have a bunch of them. I don't think it provides that far. Hey, I've been trying to convince Supernova to bring EJ over with nobility for an Australia screening, right? <laughs> well, if that happens, I'll go as a piece of his cast, yeah. or as a member of his crew. Have fun dealing with them. Yeah, not happening. <laughs> I, I mean, he's not even coming over here to Maryland. I mean, my God, going to Australia. Yeah. Um, and I've actually just put in for media application at Supernova, so who knows? We we got in for Oz Comic Con, but Supernova is a lot harder because they're a lot more strict. But mm -hmm. if you now chance you're listening, Supernova, we love you. Um uh, so anyway. Back to the film festival. I, I we do t stay on topic for at least three minutes. Oh yeah. Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> well, that's only because we have David right. there. We've got a real popcorn, like a real big red popcorn treat for everyone. Uh, late night, um, a double feature. Um, I don't know if you guys know who Nigel Honeybone is. Not off the top of my head. He does um, a lot of the community t t television presents, like schlocky horror TV uh, show. And we've got uh, a couple of B-grade films. Nice. In... Uh, Danny Johnson saves the world, and there's this guy called Christopher Min who um, every year makes a sci-fi film, but he makes it in that traditional 50s classic B-grade style. 
And um, and then after that, we're going to be so for ten dollars, you get two films. Um, you get to watch um, Danny Johnson saves the world and uh, Robot Monster, the 1953 classic. Nice. Uh, I, I do like the some movies made nowadays for that old school feel. Um, yes. I do like just for the nostalgia value. Even though there's no real nostalgia value for me because I'm only like 20, but that's not the point. <laughs> 20 but it's, it's, it's actually been made in that classic, um, you know, stop. Yeah, stop motion. Stop motion sort of um, feel. Feel, yeah. Yeah. So, this is... so. Whoa. What the hell was that? Anyway. Just random, random feedback. <laughs> Um, that was my Xbox turning on. <laughs> that was your Xbox turning on, was it? <laughs> yeah. That did not sound healthy. <laughs> no, no, it had, to, it had to, just, just for the records to it. The Halo Five Xbox is the only Xbox I don't own. <laughs> so if it vanishes, I have nothing <laughs> to do with it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I had the light it was right in the lounge room. Just, just don't try it. <laughs> Someone breaks in. Psh, bring it on. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> Cat next. Oh, so yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so it's on this. Well, well where's Saturday. My, where's my calendar? Saturday the thirty first. Yes. It's Saturday. Halloween. The, it's literally Halloween. Yeah. Saturday the thirty first. It's in uh, Parramatta, so just outside of Sydney. Technically, I call it Sydney because Ipswich is part of Brisbane. So. Is it sad I got the song going? This is Halloween going through my head. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Nope. Leaving that alone. <laughs> um, so, anyone who is in Sydney or the Sydney area or New South Wales or Queensland or any other randomly selected country that you happen to be in who wants to attend that, check it out. Uh, give us the link to the Facebook page and to the main website if you've got it handy. Well, the, de- the, the website's www.scififilmfestival.com. And you'll be able to spelled, see spelled properly, right? Sorry? Yeah. Spelled properly, not S Y F Y, right? <laughs> it's not no, Sifi, spelled... which sounds like a disease. Spelled <laughs> spelled properly, that's right. It's S C I F I. And um, actually there's a funny story about that because uh, when we were um, when we were um, uh, that is correct, sci fi film I have the web set up. Um, what was interesting is you know, when we you know, we, 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 what happened was we, we were running this competition called Project Sci-Fi and it was a 30-day competition and because everyone had a good time, we thought, well, why don't we turn this into a film festival and we were trying to come up with a cool name and we were able to get the domain name scififilmfestival.com. Uh, no one had registered it and, of course, what we tried to do was we tried to get all these other domain names that were kind of like similar and I ended up also... Uh, registering syfy filmfestival.com and I got a dirty great big letter from um, Sci-Fi Channel Sci-Fi Channel yes NBC Universal saying what are you trying to do <laughs> explain yourself young man <laughs> we're trying to squat on a website just to make your lives miserable that's what no, we're doing to you what you do to sci-fi fans have fun yes <laughs> It's supposed to be a sci-fi would, channel. Show sci-fi. If you would like the domain name, we would be happy to sell it to you for $50 million. Or the channel. And, and, and then we can use that $50 million to create more Stargate Universe. <laughs> I would just buy the channel, you know? Yeah. Sure, we'll, we'll start a kick... Well, actually, that'd be pretty funny. Start we'll, a Kickstarter. Start a Kickstarter <laughs> to buy the sci-fi channel. <laughs> <laughs> and actually put sci-fi on. So, but what help if just, just help just, save sci fi by the sci fi channel and <laughs> Kickstarter just needing one billion dollars <laughs> and, and then just and then just play and then just play reruns of Stargate SG one the whole time. I no. always I'm always watching Stargate SG one. I spent um yesterday starting my marathon again from the very beginning. I watched the first three episodes and the movie. Are you gonna go through the entire ser- like all the entire franchise? Oh yeah, of course. Well, are you going to include Stargate Infinity? <laughs> Stargate Infinity. I, what is this show that you speak of? I don't understand. Don't worry, every sci-fi has a dark side. 
I mean, um, you you are uh, kidding. You do know Saga what I'm Infinity about. does not exist. It is best to leave it in the dead it, zone. It, it was really weird. However, it actually the only thing, wasn't that The only thing that Saga had bad. about it was the gate. I watched like a minute of the first episode of that, and I just like, yeah, no. I, I, I like the first I, three I episodes I before the I went. Nah, fuck this. <laughs> the theme song was actually pretty good, I think. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, anyway. That does anyway. something good to try and draw you in. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So those who want to check out the film first, so we'll go and do that. We're going to sh- move on, and if you want to hang around and join us for the rest of the podcast, feel free to do so. Thanks, man. Uh, will do. We're, we're going to talk to Eugene about his game. Red Shirts. Okay. Red Shirts is a card game that was uh, created by a company called Weasel Pants. Seems legit. And, Seems legit. Huh? Seems legit. <laughs> Nothing uh, sussed. <laughs> they were a crowdfunded project in the first place. <laughs> well, the first version of the game aim, is in a white box, and that was so- sold... In a number of places. Well, he decided he wanted to expand the game. So it's avail- it was done as crowdfunding on Kickstarter. Um, let me at least read what's on the box to begin with. To discover hazardous new planets. To contact psychotic civilizations. To eliminate your crew like no captain has done before. Oh, God. Oh, no, it's right up our alley. <laughs> when, when can we start playing this game? <laughs> uh, it is I'm, available. I'm looking for now. A right now. <laughs> um, the deluxe. So what he did was he created a deluxe edition, and he succeeded in getting the funding for it. Was working on the game when he get got the ever um, unwanted calls from the lawyers of CBS. The age-old cease and desist. Well, they didn't actually hand him a cease and desist order. But he was forced to make some changes to the game. Some of the characters were changed. A few other things were changed. But for the most part, the game is very similar to the original game. Yeah. Um, Then he did a second Kickstarter in which he brought out... um, Numbers two and three for the expansions. And uh, Red Shirts 2 is Leprechaun's Revenge. <laughs> what? <laughs> that name. That name. <laughs> and Red Shirts 3 is Beating a Red Horse. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's not nothing sus at all. Then, the, um, he's had a number of exclusive promo cards that were available at Gen Con, which those are very difficult to get your hands on. There was also two promo cards that were given to a company called Schlock Mercenary. <laughs> I follow that guy. And, they were cool. Okay. Then, um, during the first Kickstarter, he had some bonus cards in which people backed to have their have cards made up of them to put in the deck, and those were limited to to people who backed the Kickstarter and a few other things. And then on the second Kickstarter, he added all kinds of extra cards, including a celebrity deck. He added. Um, reinforcement stack, he added all kinds of other stuff. The base game runs about 20 bucks. The two expansions are 10 or 20 bucks a piece, but all those expansion cards tend to be a little um, pricey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for our friend Michael, you know, um, I found the perfect mission to send him on, only it's a three-part mission. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Yes. We, I figured, you know, I had to find a good mission for him because, you know, um, we all know that 
Uh, Mike has uh, combat tactics, so we can't send him on a combat mission. We got to send him on something he's got no skills for. The lighting, lighting. But by any chance, does it involve being in an engine room and getting hit in the head? What was that? Well, I, I think so. I figured a diplomacy mission was good sense. You know, he got thrown off the sci-fi website and you know, <laughs> that type of stuff. Wait, what? Why am I only hearing about this now? Wait, 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 David, you didn't, were you really not aware that I got, that I got banned from the, sci- from the sci-fi uh, Facebook page? Oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, that's... I was gonna say, I mean, our pay, Save Sci-Fi has been banned because of me. <laughs> really? I mean, they banned me and my pages from the, uh, from the, from Save Sci, from the, the Sci-Fi channel page. Actually, as a matter of fact, at one point, I wasn't even able to, uh, to see anything on it, and, uh, since then, I now can at least see stuff. But I can't post or comment. <laughs> Sounds like me I can with share their, their stuff. Um, Oz Comic Con page. I don't know what I did to piss them off, but I can't do <laughs> nothing on their page. Didn't they say they're gonna sort that out? Yeah, it never happened. Maybe they forgot. Yeah, probably. Well, we you did ask in the middle of a con. So, anyway. So I, so I decided that you know we're gonna send Mike on a mission. It's gonna be to a quarantine space station, which takes away any medical ability he has. We're going to have him repair an alien ship without getting murdered. And then we're going to have the, we're going to add a second mission of the blue screen of death. Oh God, I'm a computer engineer, aren't I? So, you know, it fits. And, and since we got, we got to give him some equipment, we'll give him something that's absolutely no help. We'll give him a phaser. <laughs> hey, I can use a phaser. Hey, does, 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 is he weak against screwdriver? Uh, Wrenches? He should be weak against wrenches. Um, well, on that mission, it turns out he made a rookie mistake, which you'll find that card posted. Oh, and geez. then it turns out that there was a, there's a, another mission on there for him. There's an angry Killon diplomat there. And he didn't do so good with that one because he sneezed on the guy. <laughs> Wait, wait, I sneezed on him or he sneezed on me? You sneezed on him. <laughs> well, that's oh, totally yeah, right. Yeah, I planet. totally sneezed on him. Uh. I have fall allergies too, so it was pretty bad. Yes, and unfortunately, um, been nice Minus knowing you. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is Michael goes out the airlock. Bye. <laughs> I didn't go out the airlock. I was no, killed by some not. creature on the planet. No, no, I suppose. Or a space he doesn't go out the airlock. He got brutally murdered with a crap left. Yeah. You mean, but, but, like I said, he's weak against wrenches. To the face. Down he went. <laughs> Everyone's but weak red shirts. To the face. But Red Shirts is brought to you once again by Perry County Hobbies. And if anybody's interested, um, I do have a limited number of sets with everything. And I've also got uh, a few of just the plain sets available. So you can. Send me a message through Facebook or, or through the website. Yep. My question is, do you ship to Australia? If you're willing to pay the shipping, I'll ship anywhere. Oh, God. Do you have any idea what the shipping is from America to Australia, dude? It would be literally cheaper to hop on a plane, fly over there, pick it up, put it in your bag, and fly back. <laughs> you've shipped no, actually, me, hey, you've shipped me I stuff, I know David. what the shipping, is, shipping cost is like from America. I'm buying freaking Vanguard cards off them all the time. Fair point. It's your fault for buying Vanguard cards. Anyway. I like the old school decks. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah. Anyway, Stuart, I think it is time for the news. Yes, it is. So, uh, why don't we just start with, this? with Star Wars? We'll just start with that. Yeah. So, last week the trailer dropped. Didn't it? <laughs> About twenty minutes <laughs> after the podcast finished, the internet broke. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed that. So up to up, so up to date, in the first twenty four hours, the trailer has been viewed was viewed a hundred twenty eight million times. So what you're saying is, thanks to YouTube uh, money, they should at least be able to go back in time and delete Jar Jar Binks. Pretty much, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, YouTube. 
Then on top of that, um, IMAX stated that in the first 24 hours had claimed $6.5 million worth of ticket sales just from Star Wars. I, I heard a report somewhere that it was the largest grossing movie last week and it's just in pre-ticket sales. Yeah. It's terrifying. I mean, yeah, it made the uh, it yeah it did the record for the uh, for pre-order sales ever, you know. Yeah, by yeah. a factor of ten or fifteen. Yeah. Yeah, the previous yeah, single day advanced tick um advanced uh, sales record for IMAX screens was less than one million. Yeah, and we'll put it this <sighs> way: the, the, the cinema near me is Browns Plain Cinema. Nobody <laughs> goes to Browns Plain Cinema. I mean, literally nobody goes to Browns Plain Cinema. You can go to any movie except for for this day right? one release. <laughs> And you'll be like three people in the cinema in the quote busy times because the cinema is crap. It was sold out at that cinema in less than an hour. <laughs> like, Which means every other crap. cinema was sold out as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Because that it's the last resort cinema. It's the cinema that nobody goes to unless it's sold out everywhere else. But I talked to one of my mates at work a couple of days ago. He's like, oh yeah, um, I'm looking forward to watching Star Wars. I said, I hope you don't mind waiting about a month. <laughs> it's like what do you mean it's like well it's sold out everywhere for like the first week already it's like no it isn't brought up the uh -huh. popped the phone open went sold out sold out sold out sold out <laughs> sold yeah 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 so yeah uh got some cool flash news hmm so uh, uh a reporter uh, a couple of weeks ago mark hamill is going to return to flash is he an evil jedi no no he's coming back as trickster trickster so he's an evil Jedi. <laughs> no, he's Trickster. He's not Kylo Ren. You know, you don't know how many times I've seen that. We'll, we'll cover that when we get to the discussion yeah, of the we'll, trailer. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's confirmed that uh, Mark Hamill will be returning for the mid-season 2 finale of Flash. Nice. So yeah, um, comicbook.com and a bunch of other um, groups of reporters are actually invited onto the Flash set. Nice. Lucky bastards. Yes, yeah, so it was going to be... Get ourselves um, there. Yeah, it's going to be a Christmas um, episode. Nice. Nah. So, that will be cool. Uh, this is... <laughs> this is really bizarre. Japan is opening a real-life Pokemon gym. Yes! Is that for the... That, um... Pokemon Go. No. no, no, this comes out before Pokemon Go. This comes... Isn't that what they're using it for? Yeah, well, it's um, it's for um, augment. It's using um, augmented reality, so pretty much Pokemon Go. But it comes up. Um, it opens November nineteenth in Osaka. Nice. Huh? All I have to say is, God damn it, Japan. <laughs> Does that really surprise you, though? No, just see. I'd go to Japan, but they don't have real time subtitles, so it's so hard. <laughs> I want. I need that remote from that god awful Adam Sandler movie, the the click or whatever the hell it was called. Yes, the remote. yes, that one. <laughs> That movie was so horrible, but I want that remote. <laughs> so, yeah, Sometimes, um, change language, change language, there we go. So, yeah, uh, I'm such an evil person. Uh, Jav Lowe's Joker from Suicide Squad has uh, taken over the cover of Empire Magazine. And looks spectacular. <laughs> yeah, especially the ca the pimp cane looks, all like there's a couple of different um, variants of it. Yeah. Um, there's one with a pimp cane, but my personal favourite is um, him holding the electricity. He looks so badass. Yeah. So, don't get to get much for Suicide Squad news. So, a little bit of happy to get that. Yeah. Uh, I saw some Supergirl news. Um, it's it, tonight. Please tell me it's coming soon. It, it premieres tonight. Starts, yeah, it starts um, this week. It premieres I hear it tonight. Is, uh, yeah, um, tonight at. Uh, when is it? Although everyone already saw the first episode because they brought it out yeah. ages ago. <laughs> they kind of leaked it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not necessarily sure who leaked it, but pretty much everybody leaked. is convinced that it was um the the actual station itself leaked it. Yeah, but uh, got a it's uh, it's it's in one hour. Yeah, got a villain confirmed for it. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna get his last name wrong. Uh, Henry Cerny. Uh, Cerny. I'm guessing it's C Z E R E R N Y. He's cast as Toy Man. You can kind of guess what his power is. Toy. Yeah, he weapon he weapon he weaponized toys. Is so... he like the game maker from Spy Kids? Sort of, except he weaponizes toys to wreak destruction and revenge. Okay, so he weaponizes toys. She's a chick. 
I think I see where the plot's going. Ah, oh, stop it. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. Oh, stop oh, it. Oh, we got some kids listening to this, I'm sure. We have kids? listeners? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 optimism, optimism, come on. Hey, technically, we have two listening. Someone by yeah, the name of Amy and someone by the name of Michael. <laughs> Just happens to share is. last names, right? Yeah, it's, it's coincidence. It's really weird. It must be your twins from somewhere. I mean, I met a Michael Doherty at one point. Well, I met a John Doherty whose father's name was Michael Doherty and my dad's name is John Doherty. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah, got some, um... Got some Legends of Tomorrow news. Yep. Uh, Connor Hawk is going to appear in DC's Legends of Tomorrow. This is actually really interesting because Connor Hawk is actually the son of Oliver. Ah. Honor and, uh, Oliver and Felicity or on, uh, Oliver, Oliver and... Queen and, and um, Sandra Hawk, a.k.a. Hawk Girl. Yeah. Well, that's going to get slightly awkward. Which is yeah, also now he's not why that... I think that... Anyway. Now he's not coming in as a kid, like, he's coming in as a full-on adult, so I'm guessing, um, well, Rip Hunter will bring him in. Yeah, there's the wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff happening, yeah. okay? And it's really it's interesting. That's what you it's... get for travelling around with the Doctor for so many years. Yeah, it's also really interesting, because in the New 52 comics, Connor is, um, Red Arrow, so... Well, there really... is... They're there really are... heavily leaning towards the Red Arrow coming in. Now, there is supposed to be some... Some crossover episodes between Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl coming this year. Uh, that, that oh, no crossover with Supergirl. Yeah, that got nixed. Yeah, there's, oh. there's, there's no crossovers between Supergirl even and though, Arrow Even and Flash. though they're in the same universe and Supergirl yeah. is on the sister um, channel, unfortunately, there's not going to be any crossovers. Which is sad, because I think it would have been really interesting. Yeah, um, and, but there might be a crossover with Vixen. Yeah, which Vic, is the uh, animated Vic, series that follows another character, but set in that same Arrow Flash universe. Yeah, well, the show, the character is Vixen. It follows Vixen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's an animated series. Yeah, and it's done by um CW. Um, it's kids. on. It's a kid show. Yeah, yeah, and um the okay. voice actors for um Arrow and Flash are Stephen Amell and um Greg Gustin. Oh, I, on animated series. It's actually not. DC related, but um, I was introduced to a one that's last night that should be starting in the next couple of weeks, apparently. It's Burning Fire? Uh, I'm not sure what to do with it. Part of me's cross between Burning Fire, part of me wants to watch it. It seems like a cross between basically Digimon, Sailor Moon, and The Avengers. The hell? <laughs> What? Is... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, the, the, the Sounds first like two, a nightmare. The first two sort of made sense, and then Avengers, it's like, that eh? doesn't, does it, is it like, okay, Tony Stark, I choose you, Digivolve to <laughs> Iron Man, what, no, Digivolve to Hulkbuster? <laughs> no, basically they've got, these kids have got these little devices that when they... I think they're DNA bound, but when they swipe across, swipe their thumb across them, they activate, toss them on the ground called D break, and go through a Sailor Moon transformation system, transformation sort of thing, into a Marvel character. Oh, God. <laughs> that is terrifying. That is terrifying. <laughs> it, at the is, same time, enthralling, right? That is nightmare fuel. I told you, it, 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 it's so wrong. But... That's why it's going to burn in fire. Uh, okay. You want me to link? It's you want me to link the YouTube Later. sequence? I'm still going through my news. Yeah, you go, keep going with the news before my brain <laughs> just, just brains. Oh, yeah. I've got I've got news. I mentioned it before. Halo Five is out. Yep, Halo Five has dropped. That's awesome. We're going to be covering that next week, assuming I get to play it between now play, and then. Be, I'll be playing it once the podcast finishes. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll be so, playing yeah. it probably sometime tomorrow once it finishes downloading. <laughs> so yeah, um, CW has released a sneak peek from this week's episode of Flash, uh, which is titled The Fury of Firestorm. It is Iris meeting her mother. Ah. Didn't they meet at the end of the last one? No, 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 no. The, dad, been, the dad agreed to let them meet at the end of the last one. Yeah, but they haven't actually met yet. There's a lot of... Oh. Um, and there's also really... um. Uh, there's a big rumor, um, because of the last name West, that this is their way of bringing Wally in. Mm. Hmm. 
But what isn't Wally meant to be the aunt, um, aunt's son? Wally West. Yeah, meant to be. Um, yeah, they're no. they're cousins. Yeah. Brothers' son. W- w- Wally and Wally and um, Barry are cousins. Well, I thought they were... traditionally they were. I thought they were everything... related through. Um... No, no, no. They're actually blood related, but everything okay. changed with like New Fifty Two because they changed Wally. And it's a lot different now. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, what, any other news? Uh, there, I think that's all of it, actually. Well, there is one I have. Um, uh, back to the Star Wars. Um, I just... Apparently, this is something that they just announced. Apparently, for costumes, oh. for the Star... For when you go watch Star Wars The Force Awakens, apparently a lot of theaters are limiting costumes. Um... So, stuff like you can't, you're not gonna be able to dress like Kylo Ren for most theaters, probably because it hides who you are. <laughs> I get away with it. Oh, America and your hyper paranoid and guns everywhere. Yes. Here's a quote By restricting masks and simulated weapons, there is less chance that a shooter can enter the theater and kill people. Oh. Well, you think Bruh. about the, ha- about the whole Batman one. They're, yeah. Okay. That's do, basically do, what it's from. How many cinemas are there in the United States of America? About a many, many, many. About a kajillion, give or take a zillion. How many? <sighs> how many times has there been a shooting in a cinema? Once. Specifically at a cinema. Twice. Once. I thought it was twice. Once. I'm sure there's been more than that, but. Well, yeah, okay, relatively recently, once or twice. Um, so the statistical odds of you letting a shooter into your cinema is damn near zero. But I can understand from the insurance side of things why they're doing it. Yeah. Because every time some crazy person shoots up a place, the insurance on every single other one of those places goes through the goddamn roof. So, yeah. The the other problem they had was, at least at one of them, they, the shooter specifically targeted a cinema that had a sign that said, no guns allowed. Yeah. Guess why not? If you're gonna be a coward, why not? You choose the one that people can't defend against you with. Yeah, so you can just not give every crazy person a fucking gun. <laughs> it, 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 sound, it sounds so simple. It really does. It's not our decision. Anyway, it, it's it's you. That's right. This is America. This is crazy America's decision. We'll let we'll let them get stuck in the 16th century. Um, anyway. Well, look who's oh, the oh, world oh. power here, huh? Actually, sorry. Last bit of, uh, for, last bit of news. Jessica Jones trailer dropped, and it looks amazing. It did? Huh. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it dropped last week. Jessica Jones full trailer dropped, and didn't, all... Didn't, uh, didn't amazing. David Tennant look amazing? Yeah, I yeah, uh, David Tennant is Kilgrave in this. He's the main villain. Nice. Whose well, power yeah. is, uh, is to manipulate people to do his will. So I still have my physically, but it's like really, really cool. And this does tie in with the Avengers universe and stuff. Like this is Marvel. Yeah. Well, I, I've heard in Infinity Wars they're bringing all of the shows and all of the movies together. Yeah. This is this is this is the start of Phase Three. It's like everything's going to start coming together. Yeah. I just can't see the Guardians of the Galaxy with the Avengers. I just don't see it. Like imagine I, I, Tony I, I Stark see... dealing with Star Lord. I was about to say, can you imagine a dance off between Tony Stark and Star Lord? No, no, I, I, I can't wait. Dance to, off. I, you kidding me? I can't wait to see Hulk and, and Drax. <laughs> oh, that's and, gonna be hilarious. And, hey, and Groot. And Groot. <laughs> Groot. I am Groot. Hulk smash. I am, <laughs> I am Groot. Groot. Hulk smash. <laughs> I am Groot. Nothing can go over my head. <laughs> uh, try this one. Tony Stark and Rocket in the same room with technology <laughs> to play with. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> Could you imagine Rocket? Rocket and... in a mini Iron Man suit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, no, yeah Rocket is... designing a new War Machine yeah. suit for Rhodey. Okay. This is a little the... bit of a cross, a cross franchise thing, but think of imagine like Beast Boy from the Teen Titans and Rocket together. Oh, oh God. God. No, no, imagine Deadpool and Rocket. <laughs> ah, <man. laughs> That's going to be bad. Oh, yeah. Depends on how big Groot has grown by now. 
Yeah. Right. Oh, that's a fair point. Anyway, anyway we've, it's time to move on and talk about the Star Wars trailer. Do it. You've got fifteen minutes to break it down for us. Yep. So, um, for the viewers at home, I have the trailer up, and I'm going to be going through scene by scene. And I will, I will stop, and I will go through like quickly, but I'll stop on a few key points. Yep. So, first scene is uh, is Finn. Oh, sorry, no, Ray. Ray. I always get the names wrong. I'm fired, I know. Uh, it's Ray, which supposedly uh, w- w- you can guess that it's in the um the fallen star destroyer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I like I like the um I, I like the look of the costume it is because the first time I saw it, I was thinking Tuscan Raider. Yeah. It That's what look, it looks like. It looked like to me. I was thinking, why are the Tuscan Raiders on Jakku? <laughs> Because screw you, that's why. So yeah, um, and it um, it shows her um, uh, on a rope going down it, and then it, and then um, I believe this is um, Luke Peter Nyong'o's character, Maz Kanata, going, "Who are you?" <laughs> Who I think is going to be um, the Yoda of of this. I, I don't think she'll be a Jedi, but I think she'll be like a Force Seer or something. Yeah. And then it moves on to uh, uh, Ray and BB-8 sort of walking across the deserts of Jakku, and she's like, I'm no one. And it's nice to actually um, get to hear the voices at last. Yeah. Um, and then it shows a plane, uh, a, uh, just a random plane fl- um, ship flying off in, in space, and sort of the, the look of she wants to leave and go explore. Yeah. It definitely has that sort of feel of, the, it has the Skywalker feel. Yeah. Where all she which wants to I'm, do is... Which I have a few things I want to bring up at the end of this trailer once I dissect it. Alright. Well, so... I'm going to have to head off and try guys. Sorry. Okay. Um, I did link the burnable thing so you can get a feel for, for it. Or decide what you can do. How bad do you want to destroy it? <laughs> Bye, Hulk. Bye, Hulk. I'll talk to you Bye. Later. Sorry about this. Have fun. Yeah. Right. Another one bites the dust. dust. Yeah. <laughs> Down. Down. So yeah, uh, back, to the, back to the trailer. Uh, uh, the beautiful Lucasfilm logo comes up. Yep. And then it comes to uh, a, a pan, sh- uh, a wide shot of uh, the the um the first order. And someone on the podium who I'm going to speculate is Supreme Leader Snoke. Because the only shots we have of him is either really far away or close up behind him. Like, we have no visual shots of him at all. Oh my god, it's Luke Skywalker! No, it's not Luke. (laughs) Come on, every character that is named and not shown and hinted at in this trailer is Luke Skywalker. (laughs) Well, I already have a theory that debunks that... There's already already a thing in the trailer that completely debunks um, Kylo Ren as Luke, and it's the end of the trailer. Exactly. Probably why it's there. What was, what was the end? Um, oh, the, the, the lightsaber. Part? The lightsaber. Um, sort of sh- um, showdown with um, with oh. Finn and Kylo. You actually you um analyze it. He actually has the um the helmet off, and it's actually Adam, Adam Driver's hair. Oh, okay. So that that mask that will come off eventually. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, keep going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it comes to uh, Finn's uh, voiceover, and it, and then, um the words are. Uh, I was born to do one thing, but now I don't have anything to fight for, and it shows his uh, TIE fighter getting um, hit with something. I, I haven't been able to pinpoint what it was. Like, it, looks like, it doesn't look like a laser blaster. It looks like a, miss- like a torpedo or, or like a missile or something. Yeah. You just see the explo- like It's like a blue explosion, so it could be like an ion shot or something. Yeah. And then it's crashing down on the, into the um, planet. And then uh, Finn is overlooking uh, the, uh, I'm guessing a settlement, there's no name for it yet, on Jakku. Which is presumably the settlement that she's at. Yeah, I th- that's how, obviously how they tie in. And then <laughs> comes to the r- r- really cool part. <coughs> Kylo Ren on the, st- and I presume this is the Starkiller base, the, uh, the, uh, the name of the super weapon. Yeah. I like the name, because <laughs> I like to- I like the uh, Force Unleashed, so that's why they use the name Starkiller for. And also a homage to uh, what Luke's original character is going to be, Luke Starkiller as well. So yeah. that's a homage to that. 
Which, and then we get... Wasn't there a Star Killer as a weapon in the expanded universe for Star Wars? No, um, no. the Star Killer was the uh, was from the Force Awakens. I will, uh, not Awakens, the Force Unleashed. Yeah. He was, was, wasn't the, he the main character? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's where um, they... Oh, I'm, am I thinking Star Forge then? Yeah, and that's from um, that's from Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, it was it was some weapon that could blow up. Some yeah, that was the Knights of the Old Republic. That was the end of the first one. And then um, Kylo Ren. First off, I love the voice that they use for this. The voice is really cool. Because it, it, I was wondering if they were going how they were going to do the voice because I didn't heard anything. Yeah. The voice sounds really awesome, and it's like, and he quotes, um, it's like. I gotta listen. Oh, that's right. He's um. I will finish. It's like what you started, and he's looking at Vader's helmet on an altar. So that's the. What, what did Vader start? Vader was a just a, a shield I, for the Emperor. I think sort of the hunting of the Jedi. I think is what it's leading towards. Yeah. Yeah. And then, this is the first part I, I really want to um stop and look at. Yep. Kylo Ren is torturing Poe Dameron with the Force. Mm-hmm. There there are things with the Force that you shouldn't do. This is one of them. You can you can break the mind and make someone comatose. I think that's sort of the point. Obviously it didn't work as you see Poe later in the trailer, but there are, there's a terrible well, Who says thing. they're in order? Yeah. It, true, true. Yeah. Well, you, well, you see him in the X-Wing, so... And there is hints that um, he might have been sort of changed, lack of a better word. Yeah. And then, um, and then the scene afterwards is I like the way the editing is done because he scream because the way he screams, and then the next scene afterwards is a planet being blown. And I think it's all the metaphor of like his mind being destroyed, yeah. which is really cool. Oh, you just blew my mind. <laughs> 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 and then we come, and then we come to the scene that broke the internet, the fal- the music, the love theme of of um, Han and Leia and the Falcon being chased by the Tie Fighters, <laughs> and the uh, I... and um and Ray asking uh, are the stories true, which is really interesting. So it seems like the Jedi and Sith and everything that happened like thirty years ago is all like stories and myths and legends now. That's why. That's why I personally think that, that that Luke Skywalker really is kind of in exile, like Yoda was. Yeah. Um, well, I have I have a theory with that, and I'll bring that up at the end if I have time. Okay. Um, and then uh, it shows uh, the inside of the Falcon, and Han's like, "It's true, all of it." And then it shows this really <laughs> awesome hyper, like um, the Falcon going to hyperspace, and the it the it looks just effect, like it looks like the warp thing from the Star Trek. Star movies. Trek, yeah, we know where that's from, and then. This is pretty major, this next scene. Kylo Ren in the rain with the other Knights of Ren. Yeah. This, when I first thought, uh, saw this, I was thinking, okay, black stormtroopers. But then I noticed the masks. And, they all, or, they, and the kajillion dead bodies. That too. But also the masks, and they all have different weapons. Kylo's got the lightsaber. One's got a staff. One looks to have a, po- a giant pole arm on its back. One seems to have like an uh, either an arm can or an arm weapon. One has a gun. Like they've all got different styles of fighting, and I think that's going to play into it come episode eight and nine. Yeah, that's you're gonna have a bad day against them. <laughs> yeah, and then we come to the the um, awesome. F- uh, f- we don't know what planet the fight is on. I'm gonna speculate Yavin because Yavin's always in Star Wars somehow. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what planet it is, but there's a Big ass, just big old fight happening in the sky with X wings and Tie fires, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's the boo. <laughs> it, it, did you way... guys have you guys read the uh, the comics that they released uh, as part of that journey to the Force Awakens? Yeah, stuff? and I've also read Aftermath as well. Uh, I'm not, I get to read Aftermath, but I just got the comics on Saturday, Saturday and I. Uh, read through them and talks yeah it actually explains a bit about you know what happened yeah. and i thought it was pretty cool yeah Operation Sin- this scene um is interesting because i didn't notice this at first um it's pro Dameron um walking past uh finn putting his shoulder on and if you actually stop it when finn turns around you actually see the millennium falcon in the background so he's actually walking towards the falcon 
which I didn't pick up the first time. Yeah, and that's the shot where he looks back after he goes underneath the front of an X-Wing, isn't it? Yeah. And he sort of looks back at him, and he's got this really weird look on his face. Yeah, so I, I'm wondering, um, back um, when the Comic-Con trailer dropped the behind the scenes, with um, the Stormtrooper that was holding Poe and taking him to like a cell or something, I'm wondering if that was um, Finn in this, when he was the Stormtrooper. Yeah. Well, and that's how we've seen him before. The, the other people suspect that it's Finn sensing the dark side in him from the... That the too, is... Because we know what happened, because... I'll explain that at the end. Yeah. The dark and, side in, in, in Dameron? Yeah. Oh, well, I think um like when when um Kylo did this the um the torturing, I think he uh. left something in there. Ooh. There's a lot of things you can do with the force and it's really terrifying. Then yep. we go back to massive spe- uh, battle in the sky. Uh, ex- uh, a ship getting blown up, which that explosion is really awesome to see. Uh, and then we got to get something really interesting. We see uh, the metal hand on R2, which sp- I'm speculating, Luke. Can't confirm because we haven't seen anything else. But then it's the next scene, the the scene of the Imperial ship coming down. In the in the and it, the village looks like like where Luke is. So I'm wondering if if that clip of um of the village game um, burnt and um, the hand on R2 is going to be like the opening of the movie. And it's sort of the loop, sort of trying it's to run and protect the people yeah. that he cares for. Yeah, and that's why he's not in the movie. And then we see um, uh, Ray crying, and sh- there's a body in front of her. And I, I have a speculation. So this is my first speculation. I think I think either Han or Chewie are going to get killed off. Well, you think well, of how old they are. And Harrison. Yeah, and- and Harrison's wanted the character Han Solo to, to be killed off. Yeah, that's he what used, I was going to say. He used to want it to be killed off. No, no, he still wants it killed off. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that. He the idea first came up in Empire Strikes Back, but he still wants the character killed off. Fair enough. So yeah, and then we see uh, BB-8 in an X-wing, so we know the little soccer droid can fit into an X-wing. Yeah, how does that work? He's a little ball. That's not <laughs> I, the shape that they I have. I don't know. They'll probably figure something out. What, one size fits all adapter. <laughs> <laughs> if, we don't, if we don't if have one that works sub- across <laughs> Europe and the States, then we don't have one that can fit droids. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's like a see... Sabo on a bullet. You just wrap it around the outside of it and sucks it in. <laughs> then we see uh, no, uh, more battles in the sky. Uh, Ray shooting something with a, bl- with a blaster. And this is, my, this is probably my, my, um, my favorite one. The, uh, the Stormtrooper getting shot down by an X Wing. <laughs> <laughs> And then we come to the last scene. Finn versus Kylo. And I was just going to say, Finn's holding the lightsaber well, but his face, he is terrified. Yeah, yeah there's it's, a damn it's good not reason. It's going to go down well for that. Yeah. And so that, that's the end of the trailer. And these are my two major speculation points. One, Kylo and, and Rey are Skywalkers. I don't know if they're both from Han and Leia, or if one's from Luke and one's from Han and Leia, but they are both, I think they are related. Yep. Didn't, in the EU, wasn't there, like, um... The, uh, the twins. Like the twins? Yeah. Like, yeah, they could be, like, this, like, there's a whole bunch of fan theories and stuff, yeah. so... I definitely think they're related, and two... I think... That Luke Skywalker founded the Knights of Ren, and the Knights of Ren turned on him, and that's why he's gone into exile. I've heard that one, too. Yeah, I've heard that one. I think that, interesting idea. I think that's, and then I think at the end of the movie, Luke will come back, and that sets. Up question is, will he come nine. back with anybody else? Not sure. Can't can't say that. I can't Maybe say Princess that. Leia. Yes or no. I mean, I well, feel like it would be too much of a copy off of you know basically Yoda or Obi Wan coming out of the exile just alone. You know, I feel like they they should have like maybe he had a few people with him that he was training in exile. I don't know. So what? Twelve disciples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have to go there? Yep. Okay, no. but yeah, that's the end of the trailer, and looking forward to December seventeenth. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. Um, I make sure you check out facebookcom sci-fi for all of your sci-fi news and free tickets to go to the Sci-Fi Film Festival this weekend. Um, we will catch you next week when we cover all sorts of cool stuff. So okay.
Bye all. Halo 5 and other Everybody things. have a good one. Bye everyone. Live long and prosper. Yeah. So long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> you have to do that so again. Long, well, let me get a say adieu, 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 adieu. Otherwise we had too much time. <laughs> We've still got like seven seconds left. <laughs> oh, I made, a full, I made a full speed with everyone. Yes, yes, I love it, yes, I love it, yes. <laughs>